the whole gender discussion and the absolute minefield and mess we have found ourselves in. I think whatever, if, if I use the word side, it's not, it shouldn't be that, but you know what I'm saying if you look at social media. Whatever side you're, surely this has now just reached a point where you know, people need to calm down and we can just settle something once and for all. And it never used to be like this. This, this never happened. More of that in a moment, but this specific story connected to this. Child welfare is in danger from gender ideology theory in schools, according to a damning report. It says teachers are letting pupils change their names or uniforms without parents or professionals being alerted and abandoning single-sex toilets and changing rooms. Self-ID policies may mean parents discover their child has transitioned only when they receive a letter citing their new name and pronouns. Someone's renamed their kid. That, that's quite a big thing. It has been claimed, I should add that on there. Most of the secondary schools surveyed by the Policy Exchange think tank are also teaching the contested theory that individuals have a gender identity that can differ from their biological sex. Uh, let's speak to India Willoughby, broadcaster and journalist, uh, friend of this program. I'd like to say, India, good afternoon to you. Nice to have you with us. Listen, um, Look, I know that the, this think tank, one of our guests said it earlier, it's a bit of a right-wing think tank. They may well, you know, be in their interest or their confirmation bias to come up with this conclusion. But we have been in this territory before, and we do know that it does go on, where kids can pick their own pronouns, can say out loud they are changing their gender, and there is no obligation to inform the parents of that. Yeah, well, well um, thank you very much for that preface uh, there. Uh, and I would agree, you know, it is, at the end of the day, a right-wing think tank. And I would tell you that this is complete hogswash. It is not happening. All of these stories that you hear about children going into school and little Johnny and little Janie being hypnotised. Mr Jenkins, the geography teacher, gets his pocket watch out and starts swinging it side Never to side. Never trust Jenkins. Say, and, and saying that you're now a girl or you're now a boy, it just simply is not happening. It's more of the trans scare stories, trans panic. But there were schools now, that I'm, responded to this, India, and, and said that they wouldn't tell parents if this happened. That's correct. Well, I'm just coming on to this, the, the policy here. Now, now, what they're drumming up here is, is essentially what we had in the 80s when um, children were identifying as gay in schools. And at the time, there was a big brouhaha about it. I remember it well. You're of a similar age, Ian. I'm sure you do too. And I'm sure that if Talk TV, the Daily Mail, the Times were around, they would be doing stories saying it's outrageous that kids are identifying as gay. But it's now 2023. We don't really bother about kids being gay. You know, we see it as normal. And with trans kids, it's just the same thing. Nobody is undergoing surgery. Nothing permanent is happening. And in this country, we have something, again, something that you'll be aware of, something called Gillick competency. Now, Gillick competency was brought in way back in the day. And uh, it was originally brought in around the right of uh, girls to have birth control without their parents necessarily knowing because obviously in some instances if uh, your family uh, is particularly conservative in their social outlook or perhaps religious they may be against a child um, having birth control but it was deemed in Britain that children if they were um, assessed to have Gillick competency, which is basically an awareness of what's happening, um, and it's from the age of 12 upwards, you can make choices about who you are, what happens to you, etc. And that's essentially the principle that applies to trans children um, and kids. The Equality Act of 2010 also covers trans kids. In the Equality Act, it says that gender reassignment is a protected characteristic. And a lot of people will jump on the fact that I've just said their gender reassignment and immediately in their mind's eye be seeing a, a, a surgical uh, procedure going on. 
That's not the case. Gender reassignment can be any anything. It doesn't necessarily have to... It actually so it can be psychological as well as physical. It can be... It's, it's merely the choice. If you're okay. saying, look, this is who I am, this is who I'm going to be from here on in, that's gender reassignment. Is there, do you think, India, a, a, a wider point here? Because I, I don't disagree with what you said, whether people like it or not. You're right about the contraceptive bill. I remember doing debates about whether, you know, parental consent should be sought, etc. But my sense of this, which is actually my sense of the wider argument, is actually, is that it's never really been about trans people. It's never been about people like yourself, uh, as an example. And you no, 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 you, you're wrong. I, I'll, I'll be quiet. Well, you're let, absolutely wrong. Can, can I just okay? Let, let, let me embroider that point a little further, and I, because I know I know what you're. I think I know what you're going to say, but let, let me yeah. just qualify my point. We've we've talked about this. That I've done this job for over twenty years. Never ever remember doing a debate on trans issues until the last half an hour when I've done a hundred of them. It just That's never right. came up. Yeah. We've lived in a world where people like I'm thinking the tennis player Rennie Richards, I don't know Faye Presto, Nadia from yeah. Big Brother, more recently Caitlyn Jenner. Never even got discussed, really. And that's a really way. quick, that's a really good point you're, you're raising there. We never used to do that and ask yourself why. Carry on, though. I don't I want to. Well, no, I can tell you why. Because something else happened. And that was we introduced a phrase, and I know what your view used to be on it. I'm sure it's refined now. Uh, a phrase called non binary. And yeah. that, that phrase opened up a whole spectrum where people could, for whatever reason, you know, almost select their gender. And we know that there are many people who claim there are a hundred genders, etc. Who the heck knows? I don't really care, to be honest, but we know that that is out there. And that is where I sense the trouble started. I don't think this is really... I mean, I know ultimately there are some very mean people who say, you know, I've seen the stuff on social media. You and I had a very brief conversation about one such commentator uh, who I would never have on this show for, for the very reasons that you would not want to engage with either. But I do think there is an issue over... And again, sorry to requote you from back in the day when you used to come in with us. I remember you saying you attended an event and there was a bloke there with a beard who went on. Forgive, forgive me for anyone with delicate ears, but I will use the word for this. A guy walked on stage, says, I have a dick and I'm a woman. And you said, you, I think you were meant to go on afterwards and give a speech. And you said, sod this for a game of soldiers, I'm going home. Mm. And that, it's that group of people that I think have created the problem. Either those from the politicised ultra-left, those that are looking for a fashion statement, kids who think, I want to be part of something. I mean, there's a survey the other day, 25% 25, 25 of kids are non-binary. No, they're not. We all know yeah. that. Look, look, it, it's none of those things, I promise you. First of all, the gender non-binary thing, which I'll explain in a minute, actually, um, from my point of view, this didn't all begin with gender non-binary. This started about four or five years ago, very deliberate, and it started um, actually in the UK, and then it went to the US, who invested lots of money in it, and it's bounced back into the UK, and it's literally caught fire here, like nowhere else in the world. We are now known as Turf Island, trans-exclusionary radical feminist um, island. Where it actually started was at the Voters' Values Conference, which, again, I, I explained to you a couple of, couple of years ago, when um, the religious right in America stood up and said, look, forget about attacking the gays. They're safe. They've been accepted. You need to go away and you need to attack the weak link in the chain, which is T. It's a harder sell to the public being trans. And all of a sudden, over the last four or five years, you've had all these organisations, these pop-up shops, which didn't exist, as you've just said, within the last few years. And at the bottom of this very report, they're all actually listed. And it, that's where the transphobia But some comes of those, from. I mean, when you I say transphobia, think... no one's going to no, no um, defend transphobia. It is horrific no, no, like but, any but other me, kind of hatred. Let me finish here. This, this is, I just want to get across this point here. This is very organised. It's very coordinated. And I hear what you're saying, Ian, and I understand why you say it from your point of view. To, to you, these just um, appear random things about um, 
non-binary people, it doesn't affect somebody like me who's medically transitioned. But it does, because we're being attacked on multiple fronts. No, I get that. And there it's, are all it, these you, threats. You have been bought into a debate time. because left-wing Marxist radical thinking has messed up. And you, you were quietly living your life and doing just fine, and so no, are no, many no, other no, people. No, no. And suddenly these guys come along and start saying, you can be anything you want. Schools should embrace it. Institutions should embrace it. Not Anyone can walk in a female change room and say, I'm a woman just by saying it. But that doesn't it. happen here. That's no, I know, I know that's hypothetical mostly, but it can technically happen in some places. No. It doesn't happen. I'm sorry. It just doesn't happen. This is what I mean. It's like a dust cloud. No, I'm saying it can technically stuff. happen in places where, you know, if I walked into a changing room now or in top show, I know somebody did this for a giggle. It happened to be a gay man. Whether that's well, right or not. Well, they didn't do it for and he, 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 What he did, he went and said, I'm actually, I identify as a woman. No, he's, I he's, he's called Travis Allbanzer, and he didn't do it for a giggle. He's trans. I, I believe he's transitioning now. Well, I don't know. He's my mate Laura's friend. I, I've no idea whether you know him, but <laughs> he tried it to see what would happen. And they went, oh, yeah, of course you can use the changing rooms. Well, if, if, it's, if we're talking about the same person, it's not the person that was in the news and why they no, reported it's not that. Um, at the time. So... As I say, it's just a dust cloud of all these things, which with an ultimate aim of the gender critical yeah. movement, which is very organized, very well funded, of, st of uh, basically obliterating trans people from society. They'll start by saying, I have nothing against trans people, but, and then they will go into a list of reasons why trans people cannot exist as trans people I, I think, within uh, society. All right, listen, India, this could carry on. We do hit the clock. In fact, we've shot over. Let's have a longer conversation about this going forward because I think there's lots in this to discuss. More on that from you as well. 0344 is where you will find us. Thank you to India Willoughby. This is Talk TV.